Hello, America. It's me, Evan Grant of the Dallas Morning News, DallasNews.com. As I like to say, your friendly Texas Rangers insider. Um, I don't know how friendly I am, people. I really don't. I hope I'm approachable. I hope I'm courteous. Uh, friendly, I'll leave that up to you. But I am here for another edition of This Week in Rangers Baseball, y'all. We're going to get to a bunch of stuff here in just a minute. Let me take care of the disclaimer, just like they have or they used to have during baseball games, where we tell you that if you like these videos, please subscribe to the YouTube channel that you're on right now. Also, give it a thumbs up. Go to the little signs down there and point your thumb up. You can even leave me a comment. And... Maybe I'll answer some questions for you because I'm friendly that way. Anyway, um, enough friendly talk. Let's get to what's going on with the Rangers. Let's get to where we are. And I know that every one of you right now is probably saying announce Josh Young. All right. So Josh Young. Not, however, announcing that he's been promoted to the big leagues because as I record this at the start of the week, he has not, and I don't think it would happen before September 1st, which is Thursday, uh, when the Rangers start a six-game, seven-game road trip to Boston and Houston. Uh, and it might be later in the trip before, uh, or later in the month before he comes up. I, I really think sometime in the next week he, he will be here. But what I'd like to talk about today is things that are going on with the team as it is currently constructed instead of some guys who are not here. Uh, because what I think I've tried to track over the last two weeks is since the Rangers changed managers and, and installed Tony Beasley as interim manager, um, replacing Chris Woodward, I've tried to get a feel for what's changed. Um, and listen, I, I I don't know that anything I'm about to say would apply to who Tony Beasley is as a full-time manager if and when the Rangers go in that direction. Uh, but I do think that these are things that he and the organization have tried to address that seem to be issues in areas where the team was, was not performing this year. Uh, Again, don't think that these are necessarily shortcomings that Chris Woodward had. I think that they are things that showed up on the field this year, and the Rangers have tried to address them or showed up in their on-field performance. And when the Rangers made changes, they tried to address these as well. So here we go. Number one, I think the most significant thing that I've seen is more lineup stability. Um you know, Tony Beasley has – I do think that he likes the idea of guys in regular spots in the batting order, um, more so than maybe Chris Woodward did. Uh, and it's it's shown up. You know, the, the, um, the top six guys in the batting order have pretty much stayed almost uh, identical for Tony Beasley's 13 games with Marcus Simeon leading off, Corey Seager batting second. That's been a staple all year. Nathaniel Lowe has settled into the number three spot now. No way to hit him anywhere else based on the August that he's had. Uh, and he's hit he's hit third for the last 10 games. Or the last 11 games, I, I should say. The last 11 games. Um followed by Adolis Garcia, who's hit cleanup in the last 11 games. And look, when you've got a guy who's had the August that Lowe has had and who's having the success that Garcia has had, it makes sense to just leave them in those two spots. Tony Beasley has said that, that one thing he's not so much worried about is that because these guys hit well against uh, the opposite hand, in other words, Lowe, a left-hander, hits lefties fairly well for a left-handed hitter. Um, and Garcia, a right-handed batter, hits right-handers pretty well for a right-handed hitter. 
he doesn't Beasley doesn't see the need to 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 constantly flip them based on what the opponent uh, is starting, uh, and the successes of the club is pretty much, or the success of these individual hitters is pretty much spoken of that. That that I think that they like that. I think that guys do like having a better idea every day of of, of where they're going to hit. Um, to this point, you know the the most used batting orders that the Rangers have had this year. They've only had five batting orders that they've used for two or more games. Um, they've had 118 different batting orders in 127 games, which actually is about six in the American League. I, I know when I tracked this earlier in the week, it was top five, and I think it's probably dropped a little bit simply because uh, of the stability over the last week. But you'd be surprised – at how many different batting orders uh, teams will run out there because you may have somebody hitting different in the eight or nine spot. The bulk of the order looks the same, but you would be surprised at how many different batting orders teams end up running out there over the course of the season. Anyway, the Rangers have used two different lineups for two of the two lineups, two batting orders for four games each. One of those two line, one of those two batting orders uh, that's that's played four games um, together uh, has started in the last two weeks. So there's been some some stability to the order. You know, Leody Tavares has hit six every night that uh, that Beasley has managed. Um, Bubba Thompson has primarily hit ninth um, until he got a day off on. Uh, he's gotten a couple of days off, but he's hit ninth every day he's played. Um, the seven and eight spots, that's where there's been some play where Ezekiel Duran has primarily hit seventh. Uh, but, you know, based on if Mapers Valoria is catching that day for Jonah Heim, then he may hit seventh or eighth, um, depending on what the Rangers do with their with their DH that day, whether it's Brad Miller or Cole Calhoun, there's some tweaking there. But for the most part, uh, I would say that six of the nine spots have been pretty stable. And I, I think players players like that. They like to settle into it. I think it's something that, that Beasley has, has talked to players about because I, I do think that, listen, I've heard it from players when things don't go right, players do like to point out, well, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to hit in the same spot every time. Um, because when things don't go right, people can find lots of things that they'd love to fix. So is that having effect? an effect? I don't know. Is it easier to keep Nate Lowe and, and Adolis Garcia three and four in that order when they're doing the job that they're doing right now? For sure. But I do think that this is one thing that the Rangers would try and do um, going forward would, would be to have a little bit more stability to how the batting order stacks up. Number two on my list is that the meetings have gotten shorter, but team meetings are now more mandatory. Um, hitters meetings, um, the advanced meeting before each series is always a little bit longer because you're going over an entire team's bullpen. But the succeeding days, uh, there was a lot of talking um, in those meetings, regardless of who had been the Rangers hitting coaches uh, it was something that was brought up to me um, last year um, after the Rangers dismissed Luis Ortiz and, and Calix Krabby. Um, and it's something that was brought up to, to me, you know, at, at, at the time of, of the dismissal of um, Chris Woodward. I think they, they, they're trying to continue to streamline meetings, get them a little bit shorter, uh, keep players' attention, and – make them mandatory so that there's no it's, they had been optional and most guys had attended some guys hadn't um some guys had opted to do extra work at that point in time anyway i think the the what what tony beasley said is we'll try and make these meetings a little bit shorter allow you to address the things you need to do in order to get ready for the game but we'd like to have full buy-in and full participation in the meetings so that's the trade-off that they've made. Um, 
It also allows for this team to get to number three on my list, which would be more attention to pregame fundamental work. I know I've mentioned that they've done some pitchers feeling practice sessions since changes made some full, more full infield type drills um, and uh, things like some bunning drills uh, more regularly. Again, there had been bunning drills over the course of the season. There had been some infield sessions. I think it has just been a little bit more structured, uh, even to the point that, listen, Tony Beasley has asked all the players that they show up on the field wearing not necessarily matching tops, but the same color tops, uh, just to kind of set a standard. Hey, we're all in this together. It's not not just individualism. We're all in this together. We're all working for, for one goal. I've said it. I've written it. I know that for a lot of people, um, it does not matter what color T-shirt guys are in. But, hey, these are all team-building exercises. So there's a little bit more fundamental work going on. I will say this. You know, Dallas Keuchel is here now. Um, and whether or not he's effective uh, on the mound, I'd keep him around a little while just to talk to my pitchers uh, because he is – a really good fielding pitcher. Uh, I'm trying to look up as we speak how many gold gloves he's won. Um, but the Rangers have been dreadful at fielding their position. Uh, Keiko has won five gold gloves. Um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have him talk and maybe work with the pitchers a little bit in the in whatever time he has here because I think the Rangers – need to address that. They've not been good fielding pitchers. I think it's something that they didn't pay as much attention to as they needed to. And I think it has hurt them in, in a lot of situations. Uh, so make use of, of, of the guy and, and his assets while you've got him, even if he may not figure into your future plans, he's going to get at least another start. We'll see what, where things go from there, but I would, uh, there's not a whole lot to be gained out of this season. It uh, doesn't appear that there are any minor leaguers who are in need of those starts. That's one of the reasons Dallas Keiko is here right now. Uh, I'd, I'd ask him to work with my pitchers a little bit on field. Uh, which we talk about the shorter meetings, the buy-in, um, talk about the fundamentals and getting everybody – involved in some fundamentals. And I think it also goes to one other thing that, again, appears to be the case. I don't have any quantitative way of, of saying this, but as the manager has become more of a story, and it always is when you change managers, you know, we see more, more shots of the dugout in game. And that's really the only way I can watch the dugout in game. The press box of, Globe Life Field is is very high, and it, it, it's hard to to really make out anything that's going on in games. Um, but I, I I watch the monitors, and it just seems like there's more shots of guys interacting with one another and not off doing their own thing. There appears to be a little bit less uh, individual iPad attention to video, a little bit more. Uh, greeting players after they come back in the dugout, a just a little bit more engagement between players. Again, team building. That's that's all an element of this uh, and what the Rangers, I think, feel like they're trying to address in these final, well, I guess it'll be six weeks of the season. I um, think they would like to get these guys to – feel a little bit more like a team. I, I think there have been times this season when this team, and I again, I've written this, I've said this, it's felt like individual parts and not so much that it's functioned as a team. Uh, I think Chris Woodward's approach to this was, you guys do whatever you need to do to show up and play and perform to the expectations 
we have for a team. And so I'll give you the latitude to do that, but they didn't perform. The team didn't perform. And so I think the 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 pushback, if you will, is that um, the Rangers have asked players to be a little bit more – I'm in my international hand sign again – enmeshed. International hand sign for enmeshed. Uh together in the dugout meetings things like that by the way can i uh, just take a minute to introduce you to my little friend here this is one-eyed willie say he's a ceramic mug from a tiki bar in minneapolis um and after the august that uh, uh we had covering this club finally got to go out and have a night in minneapolis on sunday night where I could just relax a little bit. So I got a souvenir tiki mug. This thing is hideous. Look at Willie. He's watching every move you make. But the tiki drinks were good. It was fun. It was right on the Mississippi River. It did alarm me a little bit that this tiki bar was made basically of wood. Wood deck. Some thatched roofs. All that stuff. And around sunset... A server came out, bartender, server, whatever, came out and started lighting tiki torches with a lighter. Um, and I just, it, it, wood, thatching, and fire don't seem to be things that go together all that well. We now return you to our show about baseball. Uh, the fifth thing as I move around in my chair, because let's, listen, let's just be clear here, people. We're aiming for the worst television values we can possibly find. And I, I, I really feel like I'm coming close to, uh, to meeting those, maybe even exceeding them. But the fifth thing that feels different to, to me is it feels like Tony Beasley is giving starters a little bit longer uh, a little bit slower hook. And maybe that's just because he's he's gone with Kohei Arihara a little bit longer than, than I expected. Maybe it's as simple as that. Uh, I didn't expect Arihara would pitch five or six innings, and he's done that um, a couple times. Uh, when I went back and looked at this, Beasley's – the starters under in the 13-game under Beasley have averaged five and a third innings per outing. Under Woodward, they averaged five innings per outing. You take in to account that in April, the Rangers were on limited pitch counts that they've used a couple, that they had a couple of bullpen games under Woodward, and I would bet you that by and large the the averages are are, are right there. But it has least appeared to me to this point that I, I asked Tony Beasley about you know his prep his his tendencies with pitchers. And he was quite honest on Sunday in saying, listen, you know, you come in to a season at this point and with pitchers in particular, more so bullpen than anything else, but you've got fatigued arms. You've got guys who have, who have worked a lot. Uh, and what you're trying to do with the pitchers is as little as possible, disturb, disturb them. You're trying to pay attention to usage. You're trying to pay attention to, um, uh, well, workloads and with starters, you know, for a team that's losing, a lot of times they're going to younger starters and younger starters struggle. And so there may be quicker hooks, but it just does feel like with the starters that, that he's giving guys some opportunities to work out of jams that they have. Now they haven't gone super deep into games. There hasn't been a starter go more than six innings under Beasley. Uh, but that's just the way it feels to me. Um, and again, I, I think in the bullpen, it, it, there's been some, some tweaks that we've seen, uh, that, you know, the Rangers use Brock Burke on back-to-back -back days for the first time. Um, I don't think that they would have used Burke on back-to-back -back days really much earlier than, than this point. I think they wanted to get him through the first two thirds of the season before they were willing to. Um, make that 
whatever this is, make that uh, that tweak with him. They used Jose Leclerc for for multiple innings on an, on, on an occasion. It feels like they've used Brett Martin more to kind of get them out of jams um, and finish off innings and then not ask him to go back out. So he's, he's basically, I feel like they brought him in when there's a left-hander up uh, or left-handers coming up to try and work out of the inning. That may be facing one batter getting out of the inning and that, be, and that being the end. It may be facing several batters to, to reach the three batter minimum if he needs to, but more of a guy to just like, I can't even, you can't even say situational guys now with the three batter rule, but they're using him. It feels like as close to that as, as could be the case. So those are five things that I stumbled through that it feels like are different for the Rangers under Beasley. Um, as he, listen, he's auditioning for the job. Uh, he knows it. I think everybody knows it. Uh, the question is whether or not he'll get a legitimate shot, but these are things I think he's tried to address to fix issues that creeped up with the team this year. Doesn't mean this is who Tony Beasley is uh, day in and day out. But I will say this on the interview process, the last thing I'll say on the interview process, I think you can make a mistake of hiring a manager, especially if you're hiring a first-time manager, based on who wins the interview. Because guys who are mo moving from a coaching role into a managing position, the job is just – it's a huge change. And I, I, I think it's almost impossible to gauge how that job will change a manager. When Ron Washington got here, the, the job nearly ate him up for the first couple months, really – all the way through his first year, um, he was a high energy guy that I think was worn down by all the responsibilities that went along with with managing that didn't apply to the game. Um, meeting with the media, um, answering questions, not being able to instruct. So I, I think it, it, it impacted him, and I think it took him some time to adjust. Jeff Bannister, I think I think Jeff won the interview process saying things that really, really spoke to the Rangers uh, core and what they what they wanted. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't know if if that was ultimately what what this team was going to respond to long term, because after two successful seasons, it seemed like uh, Bannister's Bannister's Ugh, I can't even say it. It just feels like Bannister kind of lost the team fairly quickly. Um, Chris Woodward, I think, was a swing. And I often use this like this is not a band director, but I, I use this as a pendulum illustration to say you've got a manager over here who seems to be a little bit overbearing. And so you go the other direction. And that is appeared, appeared to be what they did with um going from, from Bannister to Woodward, and Woodward had a, 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 a an even deeper analytics background than, than Woodward, than Bannister did. Um, and so that's that. Anyway, I've rambled long enough. This is, this is the, probably the longest episode I've done, and God only knows what you need. You should be rewarded for having watched this. I don't have any rewards to give you, but um, if you've made it to the end, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, me and Willie, we appreciate you. Um, we'll be here again next week, talk about another topic or five, and hopefully be a little bit more coherent. But we will maintain the poor quality television broadcast uh, program that you've gotten so used to. So until then, so long, everybody. There's my salute. This is good video. <laughs>